Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt from Matt's Bookshelf. Today I'm talking about NaNoWriMo. If you do not know what NaNoWriMo is, it is a non-profit organization that essentially works as an online hub for writers of a variety of professions, whether you're a professional writer or you just do it as a hobby. During the month of November, they have this special event in which um, writers are tasked with writing around 1,600 words, 1,667 words a day. So that starting on November 1st and then by November 30th, you'll have 50,000 word manuscript. So writers on AuthorTube and writers just in general participate in order to hopefully have a 50,000 word manuscript by the end of November. And for the first time ever, I am participating in this. I actually never really looked into what NaNoWriMo was. I saw videos of it on AuthorTube. I never bothered to click on it. And then I was watching one of Steve Donahue's Steve streams talking about it. And I eventually, and I finally realized what it actually was. And I think the idea itself is really cool. And this becomes at a very um, interesting time in my life as well, as I recently self-published my own novel called Hollow Stars. If you're new to my channel, it is a science fiction book with heavy ancient Roman influences. You can buy it now, both on ebook and in paperback. And I'll leave a link in the description below to find out all the information you need to know about the book. Thank you. And so my idea for NaNoWriMo has actually been a book idea I've been thinking about doing for a long time. And I think that this event in NaNoWriMo is a perfect opportunity to actually explore because it's one solid focus month and worst case scenario, if I don't really like the idea, I'm only sacrificing one month to actually work in the novel and I can move on to other ideas if it doesn't work. And that idea is following Emperor Tiberius. So as you know, if you've watched my channel before, I'm a huge nerd for ancient Roman history and Tiberius himself is a character that, or a historical figure I should say, that I've known about but has not really piqued my interest before. But that changed when, along with Drunzo, we were reading Suetonius' The Life of the Twelve Caesars, and the Tiberius chapter specifically fascinated us. And we had um, you know, a couple of interesting conversations about his character, mainly in how he was sort of groomed to be like the next Octavius to a certain extent. He had so much potential, so much um, so much, so many great prospects ahead of him, both in his name and also in his abilities in the battlefield and in politics. But if you know anything about Emperor Tiberius, what happens when the shackles are off and he has absolute power over Rome, things get really weird, both politically, um, <laughs> militarily, and especially sexually. And we are just really like, our heads are just spinning around how this could have happened to this man. And again, we had like long discussions about it. He's just a very captivating character. So this book that I had in mind would start around 20 BC, where he is still young, he is um, a contender for to take Octavius's uh, seat as princeps. Around this time, he's going to start uh, his first solo military campaign into Switzerland. And the whole point, and so that's where the novel would start. And it would end around the time of his exile in Rhodes, where he's completely disillusioned with um, the politics of Rome, with his position of power or supposed power that seemingly can get stripped away from him in any moment. And so the book would, would start there, would start with his first solo campaign and then end with his um, with his willing exile, with his with the exile that he chose despite, you know, Octavius and Livia and everyone else wanting him to stay around. The purpose of this novel is to try to find closure for me as to what happened during his youth that could have led to his tyrant reign as emperor. This whole point of this novel is is sort of a psychological exploration of sorts and I think that the story is one that really needs to be told because if you do if you look further into the histories of Suetonius and Tassus you learn that they're not probably being honest about what happened with Tiberius they're probably not being honest about really any of the emperors they talk about but Tiberius especially that the, there are rumors that Tacitus, when talking about Tiberius, actually talking about Domitian, who was the emperor while Tacitus was alive, but he couldn't get away with actually saying anything negative about Domitian because he had absolute power, and so he sort of pushed the sins of Domitian onto Tiberius. And I think for this novel, I don't really want to talk at all about, write at all about him being the actual emperor. I just want to be focused on his young adult life and tracking all like the misfortunes that occurred to him that may have ticked him off psychologically. And if you are interested in some of the research that I've done, I have books here. Um, I did read The Annals of Imperial Rome, which doesn't tackle mainly the historical period that I want to write about with Tiberius, but it gives you good insights as to what Tiberius will become, supposedly. I have Ronald Sims' The Roman Revolution, which I think 
with regards to setting and some get historical events, uh, pre-Tiberius is invaluable. This book is tremendous. I read it earlier this year and I've highlighted a lot of sections of it. And yes, yeah, so this is going to help me a lot with the setting. I have Tiberius the Resentful Caesar, which has been invaluable as well, mainly with the psychology of Tiberius. And also author uh, Giorgio um, Maranon goes into great detail, not only about Tiberius' psyche, but the psyche of a lot of the characters around him. And I also have Suetonius's The Life of the Twelve Caesars, which is probably going to benefit me most from the historical standpoint, like with regards to just tracking the actual historical events themselves. And so I'm put in an interesting situation where I can follow the, the historical accuracy of Suetonius and Tacitus beat for beat, or I could take advantage of the, um, the like the, the lack of uh, the lack of um, I should say I should take advantage of the gray area in the writing of you know the fact that we sort of today consider that a lot of the writings to not be completely truthful and sort of go on to writing you know taking more liberties with the history of Tiberius during this period of his life. So I don't really have too much of a plan for that. I'm kind of just going to start writing and see where it goes. But yes, I'm. This is, seems like a really the perfect opportunity for me to actually get into Tiberius because again, it's just one month of concentrated writing and if I don't find that this book is working for me, I can just move on and I'm only really using a month of writing. But I'm also improving my skills as a writer because I'm writing in a subject that I have not previously written in, which is historical fiction. And just from a personal standpoint, this character of Tiberius seems like there's so much room for experimenting with the storyline, with the psychology of, of his character, and just, you know, trying to understand what's going on here, seeing so I can come up with my own conclusion as to what happened. And I'd also have to thank Drunzo as well for getting me to read Life of the Twelve Seasons and for you know, talking with me about this process. He is doing his own research on this book as well to help me along with certain areas. And yeah, I'm, you know, I really, I'm nervous about starting this project, to be honest, because there's so much historical context, so many historical figures about, and also Tiberius himself, like, especially if you know what happens later on in his reign, there's just a lot of things going on, and it's probably the most ambitious thing that I've ever attempted to write, um, that I will ever attempt to write, at least this far in my life, and, um, yeah, so if you're participating in NaNoWriMo, um, I'd like to hear what your ideas are, what you plan on writing in the comments below. I also have a NaNoWriMo account. It's just Matt's Bookshelf, M-A-T-T-S-B-O-O-K-S-H-E-L-F. So no spaces, no apostrophes or anything. And so if you want to friend me on that website, go ahead. And yeah, so thank you. And yes, again, please comment your ideas if you have any. I'd be really interested in hearing what you have to say. And I think the good thing about NaNoWriMo is, that from what I gather, is that it's not supposed to be perfect. The 50,000 words you produce by the end of the month is not supposed to be like, like definitive, ready to publish 50,000 words. It's just getting the information out. For example, um, I was talking, I was um, commenting on one of Steve Donahue's Steve's streams, and he recommended that I read um, Patroclus's histories and on Tiberius, and I'm not going to have the time to read that right now, but later on I can read it and then go back and edit the text where I see fit. And yeah, so I think this is just a really great experimentation to see if I like historical fiction, if I can actually connect to the character of Tiberius, even though he's fascinated me in books, I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to write anything about him, but I'm going to give it the old college try, as they say. So thank you and goodbye.